All right, guys, Boy 32 here. Check it out. So we're sitting out here in the Freedom Shack. If you follow the channel, you know this is where I do a lot of assembly and put together things and that we have a lot of fun on, on the channel. I do all my reloading over there, do all the assembly over there. We do tabletop reviews right behind me. Now, what we're doing today is we're not talking about anything other than concept. And the reason we're talking about concept is that I have this event coming up. It's called the Sniper's Unknown Challenge. Now, I have never done anything like this before. I've got all the coolest rifles in the damn world, but I just don't have time for all the competitions. I like to do three-gun competition. Let me show you something. This right here was one of my very first three-gun rifles. Uh, we've got a DPMS 18-inch barrel on it. Nice little muzzle brake here from uh, DR Guns. Uh, got a, a hyperfire trigger on it and pretty much it is other than just being plain Jane with the scope on it now this guy really works well and this side in perfectly with the ACSS radical but we migrate we move we um, what's the word I'm looking for we change uh, well whatever okay so anyway we're going to do the Sniper's Unknown Challenge. My, now, I am teaming up with my good friend, Is Your Six Covered. Now, I'm going to put the link down below to his channel. Please go over there and subscribe to him. He's an awesome guy. We're going to have a lot of fun. And he's really getting hard and heavy into the uh, long-distance precision shooting, thanks to another friend, X-Ring. Now, yeah, thanks to X-Ring, we're all getting involved in this thing. Now, originally, I had planned on shooting this guy right here. This is the Elite build. Now, this is the finest rifle that I think... I can ever assemble, but I'm going to try to beat it. And the only way to beat it is consistency. Now, uh, I'll go ahead and take this thing off here. This is the uh, primary arms. This is the uh, uh, 6 to 30. This is their platinum series. And yeah, I'm going to be shooting this on that competition. And one of the reasons why I don't need the magnification, but if I do, I got it. Plus, the clarity on this thing is absolutely incredible. Uh, weight is not a consideration in this event, so I'm not really concerned about that. So we'll go ahead and set that back here. As you notice, this is the Creedzilla, and it's basically almost exactly the same setup, including the uh, 6 to 30 primary arms platinum. Now, what is this guy right here? Basically, uh, this is all JP. And with a proof research barrel, we got uh, 0.38 MOA out of this with 77 grain to Norma, and we got it on video. A lot of guys out there, they said, man, I'll do that with my BCA. And my only input is just please do a video and show me, and I will I'll, I will say kudos to you. But otherwise, there's not a lot of bulk guns that actually can compete with something like this. Uh, most of the cases, it's the user. But in any case, what my deal is, is I like to consider consistency. Uh, so what are we going to do? Um, 77 grain. Now, here's the ridiculous part about it is that not too long ago, maybe a month ago, uh, CMMG sent me their Resolute, 16-inch chambered in 6-millimeter arc. This guy right here, the ELDs, 108 grain. Now, I normally what I do, my process, my procedures, are I will take a new rifle out, and I will zero it in, take it out, and shoot it. And this thing impressed me so much. Not so much as accuracy, because CMMG, they, they're a good, a good rifle, but they're not known for really precision stuff, okay? But I was impressed enough with the ballistics, uh, the ballistic coefficient of this round, and where I have seen certain people and what they've been able to do with this. Uh, it's incredible. Okay, so what I decided to do, and I've got a perfectly good rifle here, and people, I, I was talking to my good friend, uh, Pops Quest, and he said, oh, here we go again, and yeah, he's absolutely right. I cannot leave well enough alone. I'm always trying to push the envelope, which is one of the reasons why I will never be the best at what I do, but I will always have some of the coolest stuff there. <laughs> so anyway, and, and you know what, to back out the guys that like the, the uh, 6.5 Grendel, uh, here's a box of the 6.5 Grendel ELDs, and man, these things are awesome. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'll, I've, I'll show you a video. Let me put it right here. I took this thing out, zeroed it, and I was hitting uh, bull bowling pins at 700 yards. Away. So there's nothing to take away from the 6.5 like Grendel, other than the fact that uh, this has a better ballistic coefficient. That's it. 
uh, with better ballistic coefficients, better terminal velocities, more range. Now, uh, yeah, and again, nothing to take away from this guy, but this is the newest and the greatest thing. So what I decided to do, and if you're still with me, uh, because consistency is the name of the game, hold on, I decided that what I wanted to do was I wanted to build another upper, because let's be honest, these things are not cheap. Uh, this guy right here has got a Trigger Tech Diamond Trigger in it, uh, low mass operating system. This is the uh, Sonic Capture Spring, Veltor 2, Veltor stock. I love these guys. Uh, this has got the Fab Defense. This is the, more of a vertical drop. But, and as a matter of fact, I'm, while I have this thing off here, I'm going to go ahead and reduce the, uh, the trigger pull on this. I'm going to get down to about a pound and a half. Don't ever use that for a combat gun or a duty weapon or a home defense gun. This is a competition level firearm. So what I did, moving forward, in, in that I want to basically replicate what we have here uh, because consistency is the name of the game. So I really like the uh, JP Enterprises. This is one of their stripped uppers. I don't know the exact model number. I like the Mark III handguard. I love the attachment system. I like the Arca rail. As you can see right back here, you're seeing pretty much the same setup right there. Uh, that actually does, that has a trigger tech diamond in it as well. That's a one mile gun, by the way, 65 Creepmore. And the Arca Rail allows me to utilize this same setup. So I've got Arca Rail attachment with the uh, CAL from uh, the guys over there at BNT. This is an Atlas bipod. So what I've got here is this. This is the six millimeter arc. Put those up there like that so you can see it. Now, everything is almost complete on this guy, with the exception of the BCG and the bolt. Those are coming. No problems there. So, uh, one of the guys reached out to Is Your Six Covered and wanted to know if I needed a bolt. We are good to go on that department. Uh, but in any case, the idea behind this is if you look at the, uh, basically the uh, muzzle brakes are the same, the hand guards are the same. This has a proof research barrel, which was hard enough to get, by the way. I want to thank the guys over there at Proof Research for sending us. We will be doing a review on the barrel. I want to do a snapshot showing you all the inner workings, the hidden mechanisms of that barrel system. I love the Mark III handguard simply because I like the way it connects. A lot of people will say that it's a very big pain in the ass, uh, but the accuracy, it, I believe that it does help in the accuracy and uh, that's the reason why we do use it. Now this is the new uh, Ultradyne. This is their LR. It's a little bit bigger, fatter than this guy right here, um, and it is longer as well, just a tad. But this is a 6.5, and we're also going to be building, I'm mean, just off a tangent, we're gonna be building a new 6.5 uh, Creedmoor gas gun with the help of the guys at Live Free Armory. We're gonna be start, we're just gonna wait on a few parts to come in. And uh, guys, uh, six five Creedmoor parts are still around. So anyway, um, let me show you this real quickly. I've actually got it uh, to where, and I like the way that these things attach because uh, when you have screws in the lower part of your handguard, oftentimes, more often than not, that I have found that the when you start tightening this, this the line from here to the end should be a straight line. And oftentimes, this handguard will go just like that. Uh, I, I, once I find out that a handguard will do that, I will not use it. Uh, if, it's, if it's just like a 16th or a 32nd of an inch, that's not too bad. But what happens is, I'm so, a, a 10, 88, what do you ever call it? When I look down and that th I can actually see it. So take a look at your handguards. Lay it on a flat plate like this, and if you've got a gap between here and your tabletop right there, then that's what's going on. Uh, one of the, let's see, Geisley doesn't do it, BCM does not do it. Uh, this particular handguard, I had to really work to get this guy to straighten out, but it, it's good to go now. Um, but in any case, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm really critical of handguards like that. So, and again, like I said, this is not a video to show you uh, do a review, but it's just a frankly a discussion. Consistency is the name of the game. Look at that beautiful beast. Look at that thing. Carbon fiber, 18 inches in length. Now, why did I choose an 18 inch uh, barrel? Well, that's what they had. Uh, I'll be honest with you, beggars can't be choosers. And when they, they asked me, can you work with an 18 inch barrel? I was like, sure. The cool part about it is that 
This particular Sniper's Unknown Challenge is the reason why we're doing it. The uh, acronym is SUCK. Uh, is in an urban environment, not an outdoor deal. So uh, that is going to be a unique thing in that I don't know what conditions we're going to be working in. We could be uh, working in some room to room, uh, sniping out coming out of windows, or you've got to sit back. Uh, we might be hitting bottles at 400 yards sitting on a window ledge. I don't know. But I do know that I can maneuver with this guy. 18 inches is a good length to maneuver with. And I'm hoping and praying, and a good friend of mine, X-Ring, asked me, he goes, man, I can't believe you're investing this much time in this whole thing. Uh, and I've you know, actually ordered a 1,000 bullets so we can go ahead and develop a load for this. I was watching Kenny, a uh, gentleman over there at e the Eagle Eye, Eagle Eye Shooting. You guys, I'll put the link to his channel down below. Go look, look him up, man. Uh, incredible guy. Also, he is an actual, uh, what do you call it, gunsmith. He... Uh, turns barrels, uh, builds chamber rifles. He does it all. So it's not just somebody like me. I just assemble stuff. He actually builds them. Hold on one second. Let me get my uh, barrel nut over here. So what happens is you've got a lot of cool things that have to go on. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to kind of do this uh, because doing a JP Mark III um, handguard system, you actually have to uh, put this bushing system together. And that's this guy. And what I want to do is I'm gonna, you have to red lock tight that to the JP upper right here. So anyway, uh, consistency is the name of the game. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put this thing together. We're going to take it out this upcoming week. We're going to throw some rounds down range with it. Uh, break it in the way I see fit. A lot of people don't think you need to break in rifles, but when you're working with a $900 or $800 barrel, I'm going to do what I have to to make it happen. And yeah, that's what these things cost. Uh, total together, I think the rifle's probably going to have a, probably about $3,500 in it. That's a lot of money, I know. But when I get into the competition mode, I, I just I will starve myself to death, eat ramen noodles, do whatever I have to do, drink bush light. Uh, i got a brother who's a wide body captain for uh, one of the major airlines, and that guy drinks Milwaukee's best. Don't ask me why. So anyway, what we're going to do is I got you got to put this thing together. We got a red lock, tight it together, line everything up, and then uh, we will do um, a review. And I'm going to scope this thing out so you guys can see what the inside of a proof research barrel looks like. The interior where it meets up with this guy right here is impeccable. Um, but anyway, you'll be impressed when you see it, and you'll show it. But uh, this is on a different level, guys. This is this is unique stuff. And like I said, this upper with the right ammo can get a .38 MOA, which is badass. And it's very light. But again, we use the Arca Rail on this guy. Uh, we're able to use the same uh, bipod on all these things all the way across the board. And the similarities uh, using the same trigger system, same stock, same handguard, just a little bit of difference in the length. This is a 20 inch, this is an 18 inch, that's a 24. But uh, the key to the success is consistency, especially when you're doing like I do and I change up and testing rifles and shooting videos and reviews and things like that. I never have enough time to actually just sit down and become perfect with one gun. Like a friend of mine said, beware of the man with one gun. I believe that was X-Ring. But anyway, I thought it'd be kind of cool to sit down here and chat with you. Uh, I want to give a big special thanks out to the guys from Optics Planet. And yeah, guys, I had somebody, uh, and you know who you are, complain about the uh, delivery time for Optics Planet. Well, everybody does. That's because if you see something, Optics Planet has it, you have to make sure that it's in stock. Everyone's taking a week to get it out the door, unless it's a small company and they're very specific. But I ordered another Arca Rail from them, just like this guy right here. Uh, yesterday, it is already shipped, and it should be at my house in like two more days. So it depends on what you're ordering, totally. If you're ordering a lower parts kit, guess what? It's going to be forever because they just are not out there. So anyway, uh, KB32 is a discount code there. I want to give a special thanks to the guys at Ultradyne. We'll be doing a review on this guy. This is the LR. We'll probably go ahead and put it on the 65 Creedmoor, see how it does. Like you see, if you can see, I run Ultradyne on every single firearm I have. Uh, 
Proof Research, thank you very much for sending this barrel out. I'm very fortunate. This is probably one. I'm one of the one of the guys who actually got one of these things to build a rifle. And believe you me, when I hand this thing off, I'm going to be uh, probably uh, letting uh, Mr. X-Ring take this thing out and see what he can do with it. And uh, I'm sure it's going to be a hell of a lot better than what I can do with it. But with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I thought it would be fun to have a little chat. We're not just doing anything other than talking about consistency, uh, procedures, and staying consistent with everything. <laughs> and that's it. All right. Uh, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Support red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless those men, women, in uniform. 24-7 for our freedoms. Freedom's not free. Did I forget anything? Oh, yeah. And the proof research. The cool thing about these barrels, this is like a rifle length plus one. So they actually send you a gas barrel, a uh, gas tube, because this is an extra, a little bit extra long, which makes for a smoother shooter. What else? I'm trying to think if I forgot anything. I think that's it. All right. We always end them like this. God bless America. God bless those men, women in uniform, 24-7 for our freedom. This freedom is not free. Go to Boy 32. I'm out of here. You guys have a great night, and thanks for joining me. Y'all be good.